Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 562, What is an Immunization, and How do they work? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at Biobalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. I'm Dr. Kathy Maupin. I'd like to talk about immunizations today. This is something that has been a subject of the media for the last year and a half. And I'm not so sure that most people understand what immunizations are, what they do, how they work in the body, uh, what the dangers are with immunizations, or what the benefits are. So I thought I would try to separate all of these things and first talk about what an immunization is, what qualifies as an immunization, and how they work in the human body. I think that's important for all of us to understand, for us to accept uh, getting an immunization uh, for, to prevent disease. So first, first I'd like to talk about just one a minute about how this word has been used over um, the last year and a half. Some people have used immunization in the positive way, saying this an immunization will save you from having a disease and from spreading the disease to other people, which would then give us a herd immunity, which means that so many people are immunized that there is no longer this contagion of disease between people when they are together. That's a very positive uh, outlook on immunizations, and it is not untrue. Immunizations have saved our world uh, population over time. Um, billions of people have stayed alive from immunizations, and that's very important. And I think we all need to think about that on a personal basis, that in many ways, immunizations are here to save your life for a virus that we do not have a cure for. The things that are said negatively about immunizations are that immunizations uh, against a virus can cause you to have um, side effects. But as you know, that every medicine, every treatment can have a complication or a side effect. Everything in medicine has these. We always try to tell our patients what the side effects can be. But if they're very minimal, we rarely talk about them. One of the things that has been brought up with one of the vaccines that are, is used is called um, a side effect of Guillain-Barre. Guillain-Barre is a serious neurologic disease where um, the antib antibodies attack the nervous system and cause a great deal of pain, suffering, and sometimes death. But this is a very unusual complication, less than 1% of any vaccine. But it is still a complication that we see in every vaccine, because some people will respond that way. It's based on individual medical problems, weaknesses, genetics, but it is a true risk, yet it is one that is very infrequent, so infrequent that we rarely talk about it. So yes, there are dangers in taking any medical treatment, but we have to balance the benefit with the risk. Um, immunizations have been used this year as a tool for politicians, which I think is absolutely wrong. This is a medical decision, a medical decision that should not be made by public health, which is a person who looks at the whole population is making a judgment and a requirement of the individual to make the population better. But it should also be a decision that a doctor makes with their patient and a patient makes with their doctor. It is important to be individualized. If you have high risk factors, diseases that cause your immune system to drop or 
um, take medications that suppress your immune system, then it's possible that not only will an immunization not work for you, but it may put you at risk for other illnesses. So in that way, I think that our politicians have used this in the improper way and have tried to get us to do something that many people maybe shouldn't do individually and should be allowed not to be pressured to do because it would make them sick. So that's my viewpoint. I'm not a political tool either. So this is just my personal belief. And the last is that many people have used immunizations as a, um, as a way to make wealthy nations who have immunizations look like they are trying to lord over the poorer nations that don't have enough money or don't have enough access to the immunizations to protect their people. This is an accusation of world power, world domination, whatever. But these things go flying around in uh, the press and on television. And honestly, it shouldn't, immunizations should not be there. Immunizations should be basically given to people who want to have them, to want to be immunized against a viral threat and should be granted, given to all people and not just the people of wealthy nations. So this, that's my view, and I am not going to speak any more about political views or public health. I am only going to be speaking now in terms of individual health, your health, what your doctor talks to you about, just like your doctor would talk to you about if they had time in their day to, to tell you how uh, immunizations work. So um, <clears throat> today I'll limit my discussion to providing a medical definition of immunization, explaining how they work, um, and discussing who will and who will not likely benefit for an, from an immunization for a virus. In our second health cast, which will be next week, uh, I will discuss the known risks for not responding to an immunization. For example, COVID, in COVID, both lifestyle and inheritance, medical uh, diseases, um, <clears throat> and uh, some medications cause people not to respond to the, to the immunization, but it also puts people at risk for getting the virus. So both things have to be considered when deciding whether you're going to get the virus or not. My last of the three health casts on immunizations in this series will be discussing the things that you can do to improve the outcome or the the immunity you get from an immunization and how to do that on a personal level. Uh, and I think that's very important because we shouldn't provide you with a problem that we don't have a solution to. Honestly, no one should provide you with a problem that we don't already have a solution to because all that's going to do is make you worry and be afraid, and that's not my goal. So um, first I want to discuss one thing about viruses, and that is that um, the vaccines from two of the pharmaceutical companies, from Pfizer and Moderna, are completely different vaccines than any other vaccine we've ever used. Therefore, since I am not an expert on those two vaccines, and they have not had... Um, longevity in terms of our study. We've had to use them emergently. Um, I will not discuss those two vaccines as part of the vaccine world. Um, all vaccines other than those two are formulated in the same way. They use a piece of, of a virus, not the part that infects you, just a piece of the virus that then is injected into your body, and activate your immune system to produce antibodies. Antibodies are then made toward that virus, not just the piece, but the whole virus. So they've determined what part of that virus makes people's immune systems actually activate and make antibodies, and that's what they inject. It is not a live virus. It is not even a full virus. It is a piece of a virus that your body recognizes and makes antibodies to. So next time, 
when you are presented with a virus and you're, you inhale it, then your body already has antibodies to kill it. So you don't get sick and you don't develop this, the many long-term effects of that virus. Um, in the early immunizations that were done uh, early in the early in the immunization or vaccine world, we used actual live viruses. We did not do the virus, the, we did not use killed viruses, we did not have the technology to do so. So they actually used live viruses in a way to um, immunize people. And one of, um, we don't do that with COVID, we don't do that with flu, we use dead viruses now. But one of the ways uh, we did that is, or one of the ways vaccines were actually formulated is with smallpox. And smallpox was um, a viral infection that killed people throughout the world and is now extinct because of vaccinations. So uh, per periodically you'll hear of someone somewhere having a, a smallpox um, infection, but then everyone else is immune or they, they have had immunizations and, or they've just developed immunity to it through other exposures so that they don't get it. Now, the way this came about, how they figured it out was they were, um, this is back, this is over a hundred years ago. They looked at who in the population did not get smallpox. And they found that women who milked cows, believe it or not, did not get smallpox. So then they tried to figure out what was it about milking a cow that caused you not to get smallpox. And that was, it was this. The cows at that time had something called cowpox. And it, when it was transmitted to humans, it was very, um, it was very mild. It gave you a mild infection. But because of that, getting that infection, you didn't get smallpox. You developed immunity to smallpox. They were so close that the immunity was then um, made to the other virus that was close, close in um, antigens and looked like that virus. So they said, okay, well, we're going to make an immunization. And the first immunization that was given to people was uh, a live virus. It's no longer given, actually, because they, are, they consider this an, uh, a virus that has been exterminated by, vi by vaccines. So when I, when I had it, it's a live virus. It's actually a watered down uh, version of smallpox, kind of like cowpox. And they gave it to us in our arms and we were not to touch other people, scratch it, or touch someone after we had it because we did not want to transmit that to somebody else who was not immune competent or did, had, did not have a good immune system. So when we had that, we'd have a, we had a um, scar on our arm. I don't have that for some reason. I still don't, I, that scar went away over time. But generally people will have a scar on their delt or on their delt over their deltoid muscle. But that's how we were, we were given an immunization. It was live immunizations are more dangerous they were not as um, perfect for people. They gave people, sometimes people got lower or smaller versions of that disease from a live virus. So we then went to trying to uh, develop dead viruses, using a piece of dead virus to inject to then get the immunization or immunity that our body needs. Um, when looking at the two COVID vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna, we see that those are different than the one from Johnson & Johnson, and I can't speak to the fourth one. But Johnson & Johnson is a piece of a killed virus, just like your flu shot, just like your, the other immunizations you've had the rest of your life, or all of your life up to this point. There, It's a piece of a dead virus that develops an immune, immunity by activating your immune system and developing antibodies to that particular piece of the virus. It is no different than flu shots. It's no different. There is no need to be afraid of this vaccine. I can't speak to the others. I just don't. I'm not an expert in that area. But I just want to reassure you 
that that is the one that is much is more like the other vaccines you, you've be, been coming in contact with throughout your body, throughout your life. Now, why do we use vaccines for viruses and antibodies for bacteria? Because we can. <laughs> we, have, we have already delineated all the different drugs we can use to kill a bacteria. And that's a little different than immunizations. In the body, when you're killing a virus and you, take, you get an antibiotic, you literally are taking a chemical that is going to go out and kill that bacteria. So it is, it's a direct action that goes into your bloodstream and, and destroys the bacteria itself. And that's how, that's how bacteria are treated. But with viruses, we don't really have great treatments. You've heard different types of antivirals that they tried on, uh, on COVID and work, some work, some didn't work. There's controversy over that as well, which I won't go into. But antivirals are hard to make because viruses change. So if you're really going to kill a virus like you kill a bacteria, you're going to have to be changing your antiviral all the time as the virus changes. Viruses change faster than bacteria. So the reason we use vaccines is because we have to use vaccines to prevent viruses because, and we use antibiotics for bacteria because we have antibiotics that kill bacteria directly. They don't have to use your immune system, although your immune system is involved in that process, but it's not nearly as, um, nearly as uh, integral to the process of killing a bacteria as an antiviral is to a virus and, a, and an immune, um, an, excuse me, a vaccine is uh, to killing viruses in the future whenever you're exposed to them. So one of the things that um, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, create is a confidence that vaccines are actually doing what they say they're doing and that um, we should be comfortable with them. We've been taking them since we were children and that vaccines um, are, we have a long history of vaccine, vaccinating people over a hundred years, more than a hundred years. And medicine has gotten really good at this. So if you are healthy, if you have an intact immune system, if you are, don't have uh, an autoimmune disease or cancer or, or a, a damaged immune system, then these immunizations should work for you and protect you from whatever virus you're getting immunized to. I want you to not be afraid of something that is, is being offered that is just like what you have had in the past that you weren't, something you weren't afraid of. And to have confidence in asking your doctor about how this applies to you directly. Can you take a, an um, immunization for a particular virus? And are you probably going to obtain immunity? One of the ways that you can check to see if you've obtained immunity after you've had a um, vaccine is that you can wait a certain number of months or weeks, depending on the virus, and then you can get a blood test that tells you if you have the antibodies IgG or IgM to that virus. It's specific. It's not just plain old IgG, IgM to anything. It's IgG or IgM and IgM to that particular virus. If you um, have an IgM but no IgG, that means you have gotten the, the immunization during the last three months or the, or the virus in the last three months, but you have not developed overall immunity to it for the future. If you get a positive IgM and a positive IgG, then you got it in the recent past and you have developed immunity or are developing immunity to that virus. If you just have IgG and not IgM, 
That means a lot of time has passed since you were immunized or since you were sick, but you still have immunity to that virus. So IgG is the long-lasting, long-term antibody to a virus, but it has to be specific. You can't just test every virus. You test the, the virus that you are interested in. It makes it much more complicated. So immune, your immunity depends on your own system working and being stimulated by an immunization, by a dead virus, and it requires that you be healthy and not on certain drugs. We'll discuss that next time about what things are going to put you at risk for not responding to an immunization. And the third uh, lecture or talk, uh, HealthCast, is going to talk about what you can do yourself to make it more likely that your immune system will respond to an immunization and keep you si safe. So please join us next week and the week after to hear more about immunizations. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.